So the next part of this experiment, if you look at your um, worksheet from experiment 10, is they ask you to do a few different variations for molecules. They want you to draw some Lewis structures, some 3D molecules, and to name the molecular shape. So what I'm going to do now is skip around and do a few of the examples given in your lab worksheets so that you have a good understanding of how to draw the Lewis structures and the 3D molecules of some different molecules. So I'd like to look at BF2 minus. Okay. For this one, if we're asked to generate the Lewis structure, the rules are exactly identical to all of the previous examples that we have done when we have generated Lewis structures. So we want to first determine the number of valence electrons in the molecule. So there's one boron and it is in group three. We have two fluorines and they are in group seven. And when we add that up, we see that we should have 17 valence electrons in our molecule. However, one thing that you have to pay attention to with these is the charge. When you have a negative charge, or negative two, or negative three, any negative charge, what that indicates to you is, is that you have actually obtained electrons. So you've added electrons, because remember, that's what a negative charge indicates. So you've added electrons. In this case, you've added one electron, because it has a minus one charge. So you have to include that in your tally of valence electrons. So I would have to add one additional valence electron to account for the charge. If this was a positively charged molecule, then obviously you would take away an electron or two or three, depending upon what the charge is. So now that I have my total number of valence electrons and I've quickly accounted for the um, charge, I need to do the remaining steps of the Lewis structure. So I know that the central atom is generally written first with the exception of hydrogen, so boron, and it's surrounded by the fluorines. I know I draw a single bond from the boron to the fluorines. I know I give my terminal atom, fluorine, an octet, and I know it wants eight because it's not an exception, so I draw six additional valence electrons around each fluorine. And I look and say, okay, how many of the 18 electrons have I used? And I see that I've used 16 of them. Now, this particular example differs from all of the other examples in that we have two electrons left over. So when that happens, when you have any electrons left over after giving your terminal atoms an octet, you simply put them on your central atom as a lone pair. So I've used 16, I have two left, and I'm going to put them as a lone pair on the central atom. So. I look at this and I say, okay, I've used all 18 of my valence electrons, but I have to ask, does everything have an octet? Well, I know my fluorines do, they each have eight, and if I look at my boron, I see that it has six valence electrons, which is an eight. But remember, boron is an exception to the octet rule. Hydrogen wants two, beryllium wants four, and boron, its octet, if you will, in quotations, is six. So everything in this structure has an octet. I've used all 18 of my valence electrons, so I know that I've properly generated the correct Lewis structure. Now, the only other thing that you have to pay attention to here is, is because with Lewis structures, you have a charge, you must include brackets and charge around this Lewis structure. So when you have a charged species, if you're asked to generate the Lewis structure, make sure that you include brackets and the charge. So now that we've d done the Lewis structure, we need to do the 3D model. So I look at my central atom and I see that there are three regions of electron density around the boron. And I know that this narrows down my geometry to two different types. But I have to look what kind of three uh, regions of electron density are around the central atom. And what I see is, is that I have two bonding pairs from the bonds from the boron to the fluorine and one lone pair. Now when I have this combination around my central atom in total three, 
I know that I no longer have a trigonal planar geometry, but rather I have a bent geometry. So, in terms of generating a 3D molecule, since it is in the three regions, I know that in general I have my central atom and I have three bonds in plane. That's for any molecule with three regions of electron density around the central atom, regardless of the combination meaning regardless of this, whether it be two bonding pairs, lone pairs, or regardless of whether or not it's three bonding pairs. So I have my general overall structure for anything with three regions of electron density around the central atom. So for this, I would have boron and I'd have my three bonds. Now with this one, I have to input my two fluorines and my lone pair. Now with this type of molecule, all three of the bonds are equivalent to each other. So what that means is, is that it doesn't matter where you put the lone pair. So I will put my lone pair on this bond, but if you put it on the other two, that would be just as acceptable. It would still be the same correct structure. And then I would put my fluorines in the other two bonds. So this is the correct generation of the 3D molecule of BF2 minus. Now you might be asking whether or not you need to include brackets in charge for the 3D molecule and it depends on the preference of your instructor. I do not have students include bracket in charge around the 3D molecule but if your instructor does then you should include them. So with this you see we have our correct Lewis structure paying attention to if we have a charge how that is accounted for in the first step, including brackets in charge. We also have to account for when we have a lone pair. And for this one, we have our general structure, like we did for all of them. And depending upon what types of bonds we have present, what types of regions of electron density we have present, then we can input them and generate our 3D structure.